The FAA handles over 16 million flights a year and 45,000 flights a day. Since the deregulation of the airlines in 1978, fares have become accessible to more than just the rich. Around 2.9 million people fly in and out of US airports every day. Traveling can be exciting but also stressful. Flight attendants are some of the most seasoned travelers in the world, spending anywhere from 65 to 90 hours a month in the air and another 50 on the plane prepping for flights. If there was one group of people that know the secrets of flying, it would be the men and women who work to not only keep us comfortable, but to keep us safe. We interviewed several flight attendants to compile this list of secrets that you need to know. So next time you book a flight, stand in line at security, and herd into a metal tube like cattle, consider the following secrets. And stay tuned to the end for some interesting flight attendant trivia. The first one may be obvious, but not in its entirety. The tray tables are filthy. The seat belts are filthy. Everything is filthy. This may not seem like a secret, but just how filthy are they? Let's start with the tray tables. We all use them. They are super convenient. But they contain 2,155 bacteria colony forming units per square inch, which is eight times more than the airplane's toilet flush button. Seatbelts, by comparison, only have 230 colony forming units of bacteria per square inch, which, if you're not good at math, is still 230 square inches of other people's filth. The flush button boasts 265 of these colonies. Your house is full of bacteria too, but it's your bacteria, not the drool and cough droplets of hundreds of strangers. I think what we're trying to say here is, bring travel-sized sanitizer and wipe down your tray table before you use it. The next one may seem hard to believe. Flight attendants don't get paid until the doors are closed. That's right, while they hustle to get your bag stowed safely in the overhead bins, they are doing it pro bono. While it is often necessary to get help with your bags, be conscientious when asking for extras while still on the ground. First class and business passengers are often offered complimentary drinks before takeoff, whereas most passengers in economy are not. So if you need water, want a snack, or need a set of headphones, it would be polite to wait until the boarding door is closed and the flight attendants are paid for their labor. This is one of those weird quirks that most passengers wouldn't think twice about, but if you give your flight attendant a break, you may get extra service with a smile while in flight. This secret has less to do with being on the plane and more to do with navigating security. Crew members go through extensive background checks and as a result, they can flash a badge and go through a side door bypassing the TSA. However, this isn't always the case on international flights at overseas airports. Flight attendants will sometimes bring frozen bottles of water through security with ease. The trick? Freeze it. The TSA is looking for liquids, not solids. According to the TSA website, ice can go through without issue. Just make sure the bottles stay frozen when going through the line, because if it starts to melt, then you will be beholden to the 3.4 ounce rule. So why spend $37 on a bottle of water when you can bring in yours for free? The fourth secret is to listen to the security briefing. Nothing irritates a flight attendant more than when they are giving you life-saving information and your face is in the phone. Nobody should be so addicted to technology that they can't learn how to save their life and possibly the lives of others for approximately 90 seconds. While the chances of being in an accident are slim to never, evacuations are a more realistic occurrence. In order for an aircraft to be certified to fly, aircraft manufacturers must demonstrate that in maximum density configuration, it can be completely evacuated within 90 seconds, using only half of the total number of emergency exits. On August 22, 1985, British Air Tours Flight 328 caught fire on the runway. One passenger didn't know how to open the exit door, and another passenger, trying to help, opened the door, but failed to throw the door out of the plane. The door blocked the exit. This is something that is explained during the safety briefing. 55 people died in the chaos of a plane that never left the ground. The subsequent investigation concluded that everyone should have been able to easily get off the plane had the passengers followed the security measures. So take the focus off of yourself and give the flight attendants your attention. Lives literally depend on it. And every model of every plane is different, so don't play the I fly all the time card. 
Even Southwest, known for only using 737s, still has different models and configurations. Number five is to pick a seat in the front of the plane. Flight attendants have reported that you feel the turbulence significantly less aggressively in the front of the plane. Additionally, you will board and deplane much faster. People will say that the safest part of the plane is in the back or over the wings, and yes, that is the strongest part of the plane, but let's be clear, you have a 1 in 11 million chance of being in a plane crash. For perspective, the chances are a staggering 1 in 5,000 for being in a car crash. So worry not about an unlikely event and grab a seat up front. Sitting in the front can save you an average of 20 minutes when getting off a plane. Number six is the oxygen masks. Most passengers don't realize that there is only enough oxygen for roughly 10 to 14 minutes. It's natural to panic in a situation where the masks come flying down from above, but in this case, panicking can reduce how long you can breathe, because in a state of panic, you tend to breathe a lot faster. In the event of a rapid decompression, the pilots will try to get the plane down to a breathable level as quickly as possible, but it's not always possible if you are flying over high mountain peaks. Many people also wonder why you should put your mask on first and then help your child or person next to you. The reason may be obvious, but the science behind it may not be. Of course, you should put on your mask first because you can't be of help to anyone else if you cannot breathe. Hypoxia can set in in a matter of minutes, and most people won't realize it's happening until they are too cognitively impaired to do anything. In the case of Helios Airways Flight 522, oxygen was lost in the plane and the pilots could not get down fast enough. The plane flew around as a ghost plane full of unconscious passengers until it ran out of gas and crashed. The cause of death for everyone on board, including the pilots, was the crash itself. They didn't even realize that they had no oxygen and everyone drifted off to sleep. So breathe slowly and calmly to get your mask on first to ensure that you have your wits about you. Number seven applies mostly to kids or any flying enthusiasts. Visiting the cockpit is not a thing of the pre 9-11 past. Just ask your flight attendant. Be prepared for them to say no because it is ultimately the pilot's discretion based on their workload, but it is still possible to visit the cockpit. Just ask. Number eight is less of a secret and more of a gift to the flight attendant. Put your seat in its upright position during mealtime. It's common courtesy to the person behind you and saves said person behind you from having to complain to a flight attendant. Mealtime is a busy time for flight attendants, so the last thing they need is to mediate between two passengers that don't have common sense manners. Flight attendants have to hear all sorts of nonsensical complaints, so don't be the reason they have to ask you to do the obvious. Number 9. Flight attendants are not customer service agents. They are not pilots. They are not flight engineers. Before you complain to a flight attendant, ask yourself, is there something he or she can do about it right there on the airplane? Case in point, asking a flight attendant to help with a seatbelt is something they are equipped and able to do. Asking for some water in the middle of a long haul flight is something they will graciously do for you. Case not in point, Asking a flight attendant why your connecting flight is delayed and demanding they do something about it is above their pay grade. Asking why the plane is flying at 39,000 feet instead of 32,000 feet is a pilot question. Demanding you get a refund for just about any inconvenience you've had with the airline is better reserved for a customer service agent who has the power, knowledge, and ability to handle your complaint. That being said, when you do have a complaint, be nice they do have the power to make your flight enjoyable or not. Number 10 is the drink service. When they take out that normal size, glorious can of soda out, then proceed to pour you a half an inch, all you have to do is ask for the whole can, they will give it to you. According to most flight attendants, they will be quite generous with drink service in fact. If a plane is really delayed, they have been known to offer free alcohol to those who ask to keep the mood light and passengers docile. Remember that your tone and demeanor is a big part of your service experience. If you verbally abuse the flight attendant, you will get your one inch of soda and have to wait for round two. If you ask politely and give thanks graciously, there is a good chance they will use their discretion to enhance your experience. And lastly, number 11. The seatbelt sign is not only for your safety, but for the safety of the crew as well. If the seatbelt signs are on, but the flight attendants are walking about the cabin, then by all means, press the button ahead if you need assistance. However, when the crew is also seated or cabin service has been suspended for safety, 
Don't use that as an opportunity to hit the call button or go to the bathroom unless it's an actual emergency. If you hit the call button while the seatbelt sign is on and it's not an emergency, you are putting their safety in jeopardy. They have no way of knowing if your button call is a life or death emergency or if you just want some water, so their inclination to help you creates a safety hazard. And now for some interesting facts about flight attendants. Did you notice how throughout this entire video, there were a lot of he or she or they pronouns being used? The industry is dominated by women, but the first flight attendant in 1920 was a man named Heinrich Kubis. This profession was limited to men until 1929 when it was suggested that nurses be on board. This then shifted from practical to a marketing ploy, and then we entered the age of the Pan Am and the stereotype of a flight attendant being as much for appeal as they were for service and safety. Today, 86% of flight attendants are women, but that number is balancing out as more and more men find their way back into the profession. Another interesting fact is that more and more people are leaving careers to become flight attendants as opposed to entering the field straight out of high school or college. Many flight attendants are former teachers, nurses, and lawyers. And lastly, while airlines don't discriminate directly based on height or weight, they can require the job applicant to be able to perform certain tasks. You must be tall enough to reach the overhead bin, strong enough to lift an emergency exit door, and slim enough to fit, with ease, down the aisles. So there you have it. Any flight attendants out there watching? Leave us a comment below and tell us any other secrets of the trade that we missed.